Hey, I'm Michael Hoff with Digital Theologian, and today we're exploring who wrote the Bible. Was it God? Was it humans? Was it some combination of the two? Well, stick around and we'll find out. There are two groups of people for whom this answer is very simple. On one side, people will say, humans. Humans wrote the Bible, full stop. I even had a commenter in my last video say, you know, it was men and it probably would have been a little bit better if some women had been involved. And then on the other side, there are those who say God wrote the Bible, full stop. He shut down the minds of people, took control of their hands, and they wrote exactly what God wanted them to write. And then there's a whole group of people who want to explore maybe a little bit more nuance. And if you're in camp number one or camp number two, this video is not for you. You can go ahead, give it a dislike, and leave a nasty comment down below. Uh, you've probably actually already done that without even watching this far. But for those of you that are actually interested in the question of who wrote scripture and what that process has looked like, then you're in the right place. As Christians talk about God's word being inspired, they mean God breathed. That's literally the Greek term underlying the word inspiration, that they are filled with the Spirit, that God is breathing on the individuals who are writing Scripture. Paul in 1 Timothy 3.16 says that the Word of God is inspired, or literally God breathed, and that it's useful for a variety of things, and that ultimately it has a single purpose to help people be trained in righteousness and to fulfill the purposes of God. The second passage of scripture that has relevance for Christians is 2 Peter 1.21, where Peter says that the prophecy that we find in the Old Testament is not something that came from human will alone, but that as people were carried along by the Holy Spirit, they passed on the words that God desired. And so, as we consider the process of inspiration from a Christian perspective, we're examining exactly what that looks like for the Spirit of God to partner with humanity to bring about God's desired word to be passed along to the people of God. As we consider that spectrum from God shut down everybody's minds and wrote the whole thing himself to God doesn't exist and wasn't involved in a process at all because he's not real, the Christians usually fall somewhere toward the middle of that spectrum. So we can see God working in the lives of the individuals who eventually wrote scripture prior to the moment of inspiration, prior to their pen touching the page, God was working in them and through them to shape their understanding of history and of culture and filling them with a knowledge of his word to be prepared in those moments to write and communicate what God wanted communicated. And that happened in a variety of ways that we'll talk about a little later in the video. As we talk about inspiration, one of the things that has shaped my understanding the most is recognizing that Jesus himself could both read and write. We have examples of him doing each of those throughout scripture. Jesus did not choose to write his own autobiography. By the Holy Spirit, he worked with the early believers to produce four portraits that fill out and nuance and shade and give greater detail to our understanding of who Jesus is than if we were merely left with one account. I love the fact that God chose to partner with humans to produce his word. He is not shutting down our minds, but calling us instead to use them in our endeavors to bring him glory. As we talk about who wrote the Bible, we need to stop for a minute and recognize that this is not a single book. It wasn't written by one individual. Instead, we are left with 66 books that were written in a variety of different styles, crossing over a period of at least 1,500 years. And for there to be any consistent themes across such a diverse range of books in a variety of different genres is honestly mind-blowing. And so as we weigh scripture, it's vital for us to recognize that it's not a single book. There is not a single author. I have to credit Dr. Jeffrey Lamp for saying that what we are left with in the Bible are stories, songs, and other people's mail. Now, it's a little bit more complicated than that. We have a variety of genres, but that really gets at the heart of what we have in Scripture. And, you know, that little humorous take is always kind of stuck in the back of my mind. We have poems, obviously, throughout the Psalms. These are songs and poems. 
we are left with in the Proverbs and Ecclesiastes, these sayings of wise individuals that have been collected for us, that give us perspective on those who are aware of the way that God is working in the world and passing along what it means to live a good life in light of who God is as our creator. Beyond that, we have narrative stories that are told, like so many of our favorites from the book of Genesis through Exodus uh, into the New Testament, where we have the gospels that are narratives describing the life of Jesus or acts that are recording the narrative story of the earliest Christians. Coming from a Christian perspective, we want to be aware of these authors and the broad range of traditions, times, environments that they are writing in. Whether it's a different geography or a different cultural milieu, these people are writing across a broad range of time and environments. And yet, the themes are consistent enough from beginning to end that it's possible for Christians to say that ultimately God is the one who has inspired the text. And that has happened in a variety of ways, whether it's laws being given on Mount Sinai or dreams and visions for prophets in the Old Testament or new, whether it's Paul being inspired to encourage a single church and to write directly into their situation, or the early Christians feeling the need to tell the story of Jesus for those eyewitnesses that were there before that generation of people passed away. And this is one of the beautiful things about scripture from a Christian perspective. Even though there isn't a single author or a single genre or a single style and it wasn't written in a single time frame, the messages and the intentions behind it transcend time and speak to us today. And that is because the author, the inspirer, the Holy Spirit that was working with those original authors is alive and well and speaking to you and to me as hearers today. And we have the ability to be able to sit with scripture, to open the book and to ask God to meet us there. That in that way, scripture becomes not only something that was written in the past, but an invitation today for us to meet God, to know God and to experience the things that we see in scripture many of them in our own lives now, that as the early church knew the reality of the resurrection of Jesus, that we can know the reality of that resurrection because as he promised to give the Holy Spirit, we can receive and experience the Holy Spirit. That as we give our lives to Christ, as we choose to follow him, his spirit will be poured out on us, in us, through us to be a light in the world in the same way that Jesus was a light. Once God has worked with individuals to inspire the writing, we now have some unseen influencers that have shaped the Bible that we have today. And the first group of those unseen influencers are the collectors. Whether we're talking the Psalms or the Proverbs or the letters of Paul, even the Gospels themselves, there are people who, after Scripture was written, began to collect these documents, recognizing that God was working through them. The second unseen group that has helped produce the Bible we have today are copyists. They're those who have faithfully preserved the Word of God throughout the centuries. Now, in many ways, thanks to archaeology, we can look back and see that these copyists did an amazing job. That as we, through archaeology, have gotten documents that are closer and closer to the original, we can see an amazing amount of consistency over time. As these Old Testament and New Testament documents were copied, the scribes were faithful to preserve what they had received. And in the case of the New Testament, we now have over 25 thousand manuscripts. And the final unseen group that we need to discuss are the canonizers. And shout out to Kyle Vickers for his comment in the last video. Those who decided on what should be in scripture are important. We need to consider that there was a process by which it was decided that these books should be included, other books should be left out, and this was a process that happened over hundreds of years. It wasn't something that was quickly nailed down. Uh, there are books that from the very earliest time were considered faithful or essential to the faith. And within Judaism, you look at the Torah. This is the five books of Moses. They have been influential from the beginning. And now, as we move to the New Testament, the Gospels were very quickly gathered together and passed around into the early churches as a collective whole. And the letters of Paul are being referenced as Scripture, even by Peter himself in the New Testament. So we know that these books that eventually came to be included in our Bible 
had an authority from a very early time frame. And yet the process of landing on an official canon of scripture took hundreds of years. And if you're Catholic or Orthodox, your canon differs from those books that are considered canon by Protestants. And so even within the Christian tradition, we give different weight to different books. I want to encourage you that whatever faith tradition you're a part of, whatever canon you hold to, you can trust that God is the one who has been guiding the process to bring these books to you. God is the one who inspired them to be written. God is the one who watched over them as these documents were gathered, copied, and then ultimately canonized. Thank you so much for watching up to this point. If you're still here, give the video a like. And if you enjoy videos like this, go ahead and subscribe because there will be more coming in the near future. Thank you guys so much for watching. May God bless you richly, and I'll see you in the next one.